The Sarah carries Discovery in across the Gulf of Mexico, down in for a landing on runway 15 at the Kennedy Space Center. Velocity now 12,000 feet per second, altitude 180,000 miles, 180,000 feet. Mission Control, Houston, we have reports that uh, Discovery was sighted as it uh, crossed across the uh, Houston area. We're now processing data through the Mila tracking station located at Kennedy Space Center. We understand the uh, shuttle will be landing with an ever so slight tailwind in order to avoid a cloud of uh, scattered clouds which are out off the coast of Discovery now at Mach 10. Velocity 10,000 feet per second. Altitude uh, 165,000 feet. Mach 10 would be at about uh, 6,000 miles an hour. The shuttle will land at a speed of over 200 miles an hour, 192 knots, I believe, is what they said touchdown speed would be. Of course, that uh, landing speed is determined by how much the shuttle weighs at landing. It does have in the cargo bay those two retrieved satellites, which weigh a total of 3,000 pounds. So the combined uh, weight of the shuttle will be o well over 200,000 pounds when it touches down. Mission Control Houston Discovery now has three TACANs locked on, and they look good. Fido uh, reports uh, patchy ground fog at the Cape and about two tenths of cloud cover. TACANs are navigational aids that are used to... Uh, 600 feet per second, altitude 156,000 feet. To assist the pilot or the commander. 92 nautical miles uh, to touchdown. Touchdown in 11 minutes. In making his approach to the landing runway, the uh, shuttle does use an automatic pilot system for landing up until the last few minutes, and then uh, Commander Rick Hauk will take over the controls and manually uh, bring the uh, shuttle in for a landing. And uh, we'll, I'm sure at... Uh, dynamics officer reports nominal entry and ground track. Discovery Houston, back with you through Mila. Your energy and ground track and nav look good. Take deck in. Roger, take the deck in. Charles, as Discovery glides down now, I mean, with no power, I mean, does it always have to be ascending? I mean, can they, could they glide laterally, or do they always have to be coming down? As it no, it's a, it, and it's not a very good glider at that. Uh, it has a rather steep glide path. Uh, the con what the pilot has, or the commander has, are, are conventional flight controls, which, what are called in this case elevons, which is a combination at the uh, aft end of the shuttle's wing of what amounts to an elevator for pitch up and down and ailerons for rolling the aircraft uh, right to or left. Velocity 6,300 feet per second. Now he can vary his glide path somewhat uh, depending on how far he wants to go, but there isn't much uh, flexibility there and uh, you can't go around. <laughs> It's the first try for landing. Range now 173 nautical miles. 128,000 feet, 5,600 feet per second. There it is. We're now taking a visual of uh, Discovery as it approaches the Florida coastline north of Tampa. The Shuttle Discovery completing an historic eight-day mission in space where they successfully deployed two communications satellites that earned a NASA five and a half million, or twenty-six million dollars, and another five and a half million dollars for uh, re re retrieving two uh, communication satellites that were left in useless orbits after they were deployed last February. Those two satellites aboard the cargo bay will be uh, refurbished 
and resold, we understand. Mission Control, Houston Discovery, approaching the Florida coast, and we'll cross over in the vicinity of Zephyr Hills, Florida. Well, if there are any clouds at uh, the Kennedy Space Center, we aren't seeing them. It looks like it's a fairly clear day there. This visual coming from a camera about 50 miles south of the Kennedy Space Center at Malabar, Florida. Now crossing the Florida coastline, altitude 106,000 feet, so range 102 nautical miles. So that Commander Rick Howe can keep the runway in sight, he will use a left-hand flight maneuver to uh, turn the shuttle and come in on a runway... Discovery Houston, take air data. A runway approach of 1-5, that'll be landing to the southeast. Discovery now processing uh, data coming through air probes that are mounted on the uh, forward nose of the vehicle. Velocity now 3,300 feet per second. The now runway at the Kennedy Space now. Center is three miles long, so they certainly have adequate room to uh, put right that shuttle now, down and stop it. Six nautical miles to touch down. This is the second flight of the uh, Velocity now, Space Shuttle feet Discovery. 86,000 86, feet, 66 nautical miles to touchdown. Mach 2.7. Mach 2.7, so they're now traveling at about uh, 1,800 miles an hour. 1,500 miles an hour, let's make it. This is the, uh, the last mission for this year, is that right, the last flight mission? The next, uh, the next mission that NASA has planned will be in mid-January mid at the earliest because of the problems they ran into with uh, turning around Challenger. Discovery down now to 75,000 feet, range now 48.5 nautical miles. Charles, obviously this has been a great success in retrieving the satellites, and I know that uh, some of the insurers say it's going to make a big difference in premiums, that they won't go up all that much. But how close are we to breaking even on sending satellites up? I know it's still a losing proposition, but how far away would you say it is? How about $68 million? <laughs> it costs uh, roughly $100 million to send a shuttle into space. And uh, if you take off the $26 million that the, this mission recovers from launching those two satellites and another $5.5 million for retrieving the two broken or useless satellites, useless because of the orbits they're in, that leaves you $68 million that we taxpayers paid. <laughs> Any idea, though, how long it would be before it could be on a break-even thing? Well, NASA says if they can put four satellites they can put four, I mean, physically, in the cargo bay. If they can launch four on one flight, that would come very close to a breaking even. The problem has been, for whatever reason, they've never had four in the cargo bay. Altitude now 57,000 feet, velocity 1,100 feet per second, range now 30.3 nautical miles. Looks like a passenger airliner, doesn't it? Those black spots along the side of the fuselage, though, are not windows. Winds on the surface reported now at four knots out of uh, 300 degrees. Oh, you can see him making rocket burns there. See that? Attitude control. Mach 1. Velocity 989 uh, feet per second. Altitude 48,000 feet. Discovery now 25 nautical miles from touchdown. The reason for the delay of Challenger was uh, some of the tiles. Yeah, you can see uh, Rick Hawk going into that uh, left-hand turn we talked about. As he begins the final... Discovery now entering the heading alignment circle, a 304-degree uh, left overhead turn. Max G is 1.5 on the hack. Max G's 1.5, meaning that uh, your arm weighs one and a half times what it would normally weigh. Velocity now 
Flight Dynamics Officer reports nominal energy. Equivalent airspeed now 247 knots. Range 18 nautical miles. Just 18 miles from the uh, sonic Kennedy boom Space just Center. Heard at the Kennedy Space Center. They just heard the sonic boom as they passed through Mach 1. Velocity 732 feet per second. Now about 30,000 feet. Range 16 nautical miles. Had they landed to the north, they would have used a teardrop, uh, again, left-hand turn. Four nautical miles, 627 feet per second. They would have taken the shuttle southeast of the uh, okay, Kennedy Space Center. Now. Surface winds 330 at 5, Rick. Okay, thank you, Dick. So the winds are from the northwest at 5 knots, which means that's the tailwind that they'll have, which it tends to make your uh, an aircraft or a space shuttle. Discovery now at 21,000 feet. What they call a little hotter on landing, which will take a little more runway to get the uh, shuttle stopped. So we shouldn't be surprised if we see it use much of that uh, three miles. Last time they, they used about two thirds of the Airspeed runway. Airspeed steady at about 260 knots. Flight dynamics officer reports he's looking good rolling onto the final. Just about completing that 300 degree turn and rolling out on the final approach. There was some earlier concern this morning. Now about seven nautical miles to touch down. That because of the weather at the Kennedy Space Center, they might have, have had to divert the shuttle to a, a landing at uh, Edwards Air Force Base in California. But the weather did clear out at the Kennedy Space Center. Velocity 600 feet per second, now at 11,000 feet. And at about 5.30 Eastern Time this morning, they gave them a go to land at the Kennedy Space Center. Discovery Houston on glide slope on center line. That's where you get the sensation of speed when you see it move between the clouds. Now 4.6 nautical miles out. Airspeed 290 knots. That's over 300 miles an hour. 5,700 feet, 3.6 nautical miles. Now down to 4,700 feet, 3.1 nautical miles to go. Because it's not a good glider or a good flyer, they don't lower the landing gear until the last moment. You see, that's a fairly steep glide path in final approach. And he's got a heavy sink rate, too. Now 1,100 feet, 1 1.4 nautical miles. And the gear should be extending momentarily. There they go. Wheels are down. And locked. They call that greasing it. Touchdown. Discovery now rolling out. Runway 15 at Kennedy Space Center. After a 2.5 million mile service call, the crew of 51A is home. The sound of the uh, aircraft that you heard was not Just the shuttle. Report that our, uh, no sound. Entry was time was uh, no four seconds going. off. Uh, the sound is the, probably the uh, weather plane, the chase plane that John Young is piloting. But that's what's called a dead stick landing, because you have no power once, once the shuttle has uh, made its re-entry. And coming to a final stop right on the center line, on runway 15. Roger, wheel stop. Look like an OK pass all the way. OK, we'll get into the post landing. Now, the crew will remain inside the uh, cabin while a uh, convoy of uh, safety crew comes out, and they will... Uh, control now about to go into the post-landing uh, safety of the vehicle. Well, you'll hear what's going to happen. I'm sure Mission Control is going to tell us.
So while we're waiting for that, uh, here comes the start of the safety. Tank treatment. ISO 345 B switch and the right RCS cross speed 345 switch. All right, they're talking about, it appears as if there's some venting at the aft end of the shuttle, and they're talking about uh, uh, turning off certain switches in the cabin. Uh, RCS switch would be... Let me read them back to be sure. Leave that or put in GPC. The forward two and three manifolds. The right arms, tank ISO A and cross speed B. The left RCS, tank ISO 345. And the right RCS, cross speed, uh, 345. Affirmative, Dave. Uh, on the left RCS, that's the tank ISO 345B switch. And a reminder from the uh, entry message we sent up, uh, there's a mod uh, uh, for the left and right ohms that we'd like the right ohms cross feed be closed, then GPC, prior to opening the left ohms cross feeds. Uh, the ohms is, uh, is referred to as the orbital maneuvering system, which does uh, indicate that there is perhaps some this is uh, shuttle recovery fuel. control. The recovery convoy vehicles are proceeding on to their assigned positions at this time. Yeah, so that definitely is fuel venting. We can the safety assessment team outfitted in special protective suits uh, to begin their checks for hazardous vapors in just a few minutes. And unless we miss our guess, those are hazardous vapors you're looking at. Now, this doesn't mean that the uh, shuttle is in any jeopardy at this point, but it does mean that the uh, ground We're safety some crew of exhaust from the uh, orbiter auxiliary power units this is nominal not unexpected at all so ground control says this is uh, an expected uh, exhausting of uh, auxiliary power unit fuel However, from personal experience, I've never seen this after a shuttle has touched down and landed. So if it is a nom if nominal, meaning that uh, it does not constitute any hazard to the shuttle. Here's the first of the uh, vehicles in the uh, uh, ground safety convoy. As soon as convoy. the safety assessment team can verify that there are no hazardous vapors at the forward end of the vehicle, uh, the mobile white room, will be put into place around the orbiter hatch and preparations will begin for the flight crew's departure. So it will be, uh, we expect another, oh, 30, maybe 40 minutes before the ground safety crew has completed its inspection and ensured that there is no uh, safety hazard in or around the vehicle Water, before Svetlana, the... Hallelujah, I'm Pat Hall. And you're looking at the uh, closeout crew that is completing the uh, procedures of opening the cabin door. Uh, the process here is that the... Go ahead, uh, Discovery. Uh, Roger, Dick. Uh, this is Franklin, and uh, uh, the crew just got out, got out calm, and uh, we'll get an SEO here uh, pretty soon. That's astronaut... Okay, good morning, Franklin. Good morning. Franklin Chan who uh, is one of the closeout crew. And the procedure here is the flight surgeon goes in to just make sure everybody's feeling well and has no physical problems before they come down. Uh, at the right side, you can see uh, a windmill affair. That's used to blow away any uh, toxic gases, of which are, there are none reported around the uh, space shuttle. The shuttle landed uh, about 40 minutes ago, at just 10 seconds before 7 o'clock Eastern time. And it uh, was a spectacular, as always, a spectacular landing. Here's a playback, video playback of that. The shuttle used a, a little over 12,000 feet of runway to land. The runway is 15,000 feet long at the Kennedy Space Center. They landed with a slight tailwind in order to avoid some uh, clouds that were out over the eastern and southeastern portion of uh, Cape Canaveral. 
Now we're back to live pictures as we again await momentarily the uh, egress of the crew of the shuttle Discovery, the four men and one woman, who have uh, completed an historic eight days in space that included the successful deployment of two communications satellites, one uh, for the Canadian government and one for uh, the Navy, called LeSat-1, another communication satellite that will be used to link communications among ships, airplanes, and uh, ground stations. For that effort, uh, NASA receives $26 million. In addition, they get another $5.5 million uh, for the successful retrieval of two communication satellites, the Palapa and Westar 6, which now are securely stowed in the cargo bay of the space shuttle. Those two satellites were sent into a useless orbits uh, when their rocket motors failed uh, last February. And uh, this crew, of course, has demonstrated for the first time that a shuttle can go up there and retrieve communication satellites and bring them back where they will be refurbished uh, by the owner, which is the insurer, and then resold. The uh, crew members here that you see in what look like spacesuits are members of the safety assessment crew. They are, it's their responsibility and job to first determine with uh, gas detectors that there are no dangerous, toxic, or flammable gases uh, venting from the space shuttle after landing. And uh, after that has been completed, which it has, they then uh, perform uh, the task of uh, venting and uh, taking off the uh, fuel from the uh, auxiliary power unit at the tail section. You can see them working up there and also providing uh, the cooling connections so that the electronics in the uh, shuttle don't overheat during the ground operation. There was earlier this morning some concern that the shuttle would not be able to land at the Kennedy Space Center because of uh, cloud conditions. And uh, Edwards Air Force Base was the choice as the alternate where the weather conditions were reported good. However, the clouds did clear out of the Cape and at about 5.30 a.m. Eastern Time, Mission Control in Houston gave them the go for a landing at the Kennedy Space Center. It's uh, quite important to land the shuttle at the Kennedy Space Center, if at all possible, because it shortens the turnaround time and NASA now has scheduled uh, the discovery to go every two months with a Challenger in between, meaning that the uh, a space shuttle is flown every month. Now that uh, program has run into uh, a delay because of Challenger's tiles. A uh, number of tiles came loose. They may have to replace as many as 2,800 tiles, uh, which they say that because of nine missions in space, or seven, I think, seven or nine missions, but a number of missions in space, and also uh, water repellent chemicals that are used, uh, perhaps loosen those tiles. The flight surgeon is in the is in the closeout area, and uh, we should be we should see the astronauts uh, emerge uh, momentarily. From here, they will uh, board a mobile. First, we can expect them probably to do a walk around. They usually the crew wants to take a look at how the uh, shuttle fared during re-entry. After completing that walk around of Discovery, they then will board a mobile van and return to the crew quarters area. It usually takes uh, between 30 and 45 minutes after the shuttles land before the, the crew uh, makes its exit. The next shuttle mission scheduled is in uh, mid-January now. And that... CDR, radio check -up. CDR, you're loud and clear. And it's... We're supporting team. That's a red carpet. Here they come. Commander Rick Houck, followed by pilot Mr. David Joel Walker. Houston, we now have uh, exit of the 51A crew, led by uh, Commander Rick Houck, followed by pilot Dave Walker, Mr. Specialist Joe Allen, Anna Fisher, and uh, bringing up the rear, Dale Gardner. They're being met by uh, Director of Flight Crew Operations, George W.S. Abbey from Johnson Space Center. Little wobbly legs there after a full week in, uh, over a week in space, which is not unusual. Well, the crew didn't even make a walk around this time. <laughs> they, they said uh, earlier this morning in their communications they were anxious to get home. 
Uh, Joe Allen said he had a lot of grass to mow, and Dale Gardner said he had a lot of bills to pay. Crew is uh, getting into the uh, Astro van for the short trip back to the ONC building. They had a bus to catch, too. And they're rolling up the red carpet. <laughs> they aren't wasting any time this morning. In fact, they closed the door before the last man got in. <laughs> there goes the red carpet. <laughs> and the van is off to the crew quarters. So we've seen the uh, completion of as we say, in a, in a historic uh, NASA mission, Mission 51A, which uh, accomplished the successful deployment of two communications satellites and the successful retrieval for the first time of two communications satellites that were stranded in useless orbits.